In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the SNA's data port. The Arduino comes with several serial ports, one of which is associated with the USB programming port. As well, there are other serial ports that are connected to the Arduino, and we are using serial port 1. In this prototype, there is a header here that's connected to uh, serial port 1, and this will be connected to the data port. In the final Arduino prototype, this port will be connected to an RCA audio jack, which will have a special cable that you'll have to make that will be connected to a uh, USB to serial converter. It's very important that you do not connect your data port to a PC's RS-232 port. Some older PCs come with a, the a DB9 or DB25 connector which supports RS-232. RS-232 uses much higher voltages than what the Arduino supports and using RS-232 with this data port, you will damage the Arduino. The data port header is pin compatible with the HC05 Bluetooth module. So if you wanted, you could plug in an HC05 Bluetooth module and you would be able to access the data port using Bluetooth. I have not put the software in to enable Bluetooth but it's very, very simple to go and enable that uh, function. The serial port that's associated with the USB programming port can be accessed from the Arduino programming GUI. There is a serial monitor icon that opens up a console window that allows you to access the Arduino serial port that's associated with the USB programming connector. This is not the data port that I'm referring to. To use the data port, there's nothing you need to do from the Arduino LCD menu. However, from the SNA software, there are some options which allows you to customize the data port. So here I've got the SNA software open within the Arduino uh, programming IDE and I've got the all underscore config dot h header file. There are three defines that are used to configure the data port. The first define here enables the data port and if you comment this line out the data port will not be compiled. The, the software code associated with the data port will not be compiled and as a result uh, the Arduino will not um, support a data port. So if you do not plan to use a data port you can just uh, comment this line out. A benefit of commenting out the data port is that you'll get back about 30 percent of your memory. The second define here enable diagnostics will enable or disable certain diagnostic commands like for example there's one diagnostic command that allows you to dump your memory to see what's stored in the uh, the SNA's memory or or to see uh, specific calibration values that are stored the final define here it's a legacy define which is not used uh, commenting this line out will have no effect on the software. Originally, in, in, in prior releases of the, the SNA soft, software, I had calibration commands that were available from the uh, data port. In this latest release, I've removed those commands, but I've left this define in because in the future I may put those commands back in. In order to access the SNA's data port, you'll need to install a serial console program or a serial TTY program on your PC that can access a serial port. On my PC, I'm using the Secure CRT program. 
and here I've got it configured to access the data port. On my PC, the USB to serial converter is associated with COM14. And if we just look at how COM14 is configured, So COM14 is configured with 115,200 bits per second, 8 data bits, no parity, and 1 stop bit. Once you've got your serial console program connected to the PC serial port that is associated with the Arduino's data port, you can power on the SNA. And once the, the SNA is powered up, you'll get a, a line of text that's displayed showing you the software version. And as well, you get a prompt, which is uh, a colon with a greater than sign. That prompt is telling you that the SNA is waiting for you to enter a command. The first command you should become familiar with is the H command, which is the help command. The help command basically displays all the supported commands as well as gives you some information about how to use the command. The B command allows you to set or clear specific parameter bits that configure certain aspects of the, of the Arduino. The B command allows you to set or clear certain parameter bits in a, in a configuration The B command allows you to set or clear certain configuration bits that enable or disable certain features within the Arduino. If I bring up the Arduino programming interface So currently, there are three param three bits that you can set. One is the lock menu, which I talked about in a previous uh, video. So if you were to set the lock menu bit, you would basically disable all the calibration uh, related menu options on the LCD. There's the current jump or cursor jump. So these are the current bits, configuration bits, that can be set to configure the um, Arduino. So currently, these are the configured bits that allows you to configure certain aspects of the, the SNA. So currently there are only three configuration bits that can be set or clear. In the future there are probably more bits that are going to be added. But currently uh, the first bit is the lock menu bit which we talked about in a pre prior video. So if you were to set the lock menu bit, the calibration menu options on the LCD would not appear on the screen. The cursor jump alternate bit allows you to, to have the cursor jump by 100 or by 10. So in the case if you set the cursor jump alternate bit, whenever you're in a sweep and you're using the rotary encoder to move a cursor across the plot, if you push the rotary encoder, it'll jump by 10 or by 100. With the current jump alternate, it jumps by 10. And with the bit clear, it jumps by 100. The calibrate with 9850 bit, what that allows you to do is whenever you're going in and you're calibrating the 8307, if this bit is set, it turns on the 9850 
9850 to generate a frequency. So if you wanted, you could use the 9850 to calibrate the 8307. If you were just to type the B command, it will come out and display what bits are set. So right now it's set to jump by 100 and it's the uh, calibrate with 9850 bit is set. So it's saying that it's going to use the 9850. So whenever you go into the CalDBM option, it turns on the 9850 to generate a frequency. Uh, I think it's a uh, 10 megahertz. It generates a 10 megahertz uh, signal, which you could use that if you know what the uh, power reading is of the output from the 9850. You could use that to calibrate the 8307. You can set or clear the bits by doing B S and then the bit number or or the bit val value or B C to clear the bit the value. So if you look here, bit number two was for lock menu. So if you were to say BS2, that would set bit two, and you'd be setting the lock menu option. If you were to say BC2, you would clear that bit. You'd clear bit num number two. The D command is a very useful diagnostic command which allows you to dump the configuration of the uh, the SNA. You could also dump out the memory. Um, the, like for example, you could dump out the first 100 bytes of memory or the first 1000 bytes of memory and display it to the screen. This is useful if you're troubleshooting the, uh, troubleshooting the program. You can also dump out the 9850 uh, calibration values that are saved or you could dump out the return loss bridge calibration values that are saved. So example if you were to just press D to dump the config see it displays a whole bunch of information here showing you what the 8307 the slope and intercept is it's showing you what uh, DBM values were used for the calibration and the associated voltages that it read. It's showing you the 9850 frequency accuracy correction as well as the slope and intercept used to compensate for the roll off of the 9850 with frequency. There's also showing you the return loss bridge, the open sweep and the 50 ohm closed sweep it's showing you the slope and intercept associated with those sweeps there are your parameter bits and it's showing you the last sweep that was done it was a crystal sweep start stop frequency uh, the increment uh, the mark frequencies and uh, next line is showing you how many files are saved right now there are eight files are saved then it's telling you the address of the various um, configuration arrays. So the uh, AD9850 uh, is stored at address 95 and so forth. So this here you would only use if you're actually troubleshooting the program. So if we go and we execute the help command again. So if we were to go and say dump the first, you know, 100 bytes of memory, we could do dump memory 100, and that'll dump out the first 100 bytes of memory, and that is giving you the memory address. So that's giving you the memory address, the value at that address, and it's uh, that's giving you the... Um, the hex value of, of what's stored there. The DA command will dump out the actual data that was captured to calibrate the 9850 to compensate for the frequency roll-off. 
So here you'll see it's displaying the start stop frequency and the uh, resolution. It's showing you the slope intercept and as well as giving you the frequency, the ADC value that was captured, and this is the ADC value that's predicted from the slope and intercept, and then it's telling you the deviation. How much does those two values deviate? And so that can give you an indication of how well uh, the calibration was done. So the DA command also will generate a plot on the LCD automatically that shows the power level of the signal as a function of frequency. So here you could see the actual signal rolling off. It looks like it's rolling off uh, quite a bit, but it's not because this is auto scaled. So it, uh, it looks like it's jagged, but it's just because this has been scaled to only show the data between the, uh, the, the start and stop. So it's showing you the slope intercept and the deviation in values that were captured. And here it says press any button to continue. So you press any button and the console returns. The DB command is very similar to the DA command except it's for the data captured for the return loss bridge sweeps. There are, um, to calibrate the return loss bridge we did an open sweep and we did a closed sweep with a 50 ohm uh, terminator. So if we were to do a DB, that will display the return loss bridge data. So the first set of data that's displayed is for the open bridge. See it says open values. It gives you the slope, the intercept, and again it's giving you the frequency the value from the ADC that was captured, and this is the predicted value from the slope and intercept at that frequency, and then the last number is giving you the deviation. And like the DA command, it also generates a chart of the, of the roll-off of the signal with frequency, and it's giving you the slope, intercept, and the deviation and it's asking you to press any button to continue. So once you press any button, then it displays the closed sweep. So this is the data for when the 50 ohm terminator was connected to the, the SNA and the sweep was done. See, and it says 50 ohm close values. It's giving you the slope intercept and again, the ADC values and it generates a plot showing what that uh, data looks like and again it's giving you the slope intercept and the deviation then it's asking you to press any button once you press any button the data console comes back and you get the prompt